What do quilts have to do with adventure and Western history? We're finding out today as At Your Leisure takes you to one town where outlaws and motorcycles run side by side. Follow Rhea and me through a tactile time capsule waiting to be explored. Then join me, Stephen Human, as I discover how one natural lake has framed the lives and summer antics of families stretching back millennia. I'll show you how it can do the same for you. How can you make pizza in your backyard? We'll have the recipe right now on At Your Leisure. Utah. It's about as far from urban as you can get. Founded in 1864, this town has a unique history that melds gambling, horse races, outlaws, and quilts of all things. It's worth taking a closer look here, and that's exactly what Chad and I are doing today as we travel along historic Highway 89. Park yourself in Panguitch, because think about it. You can do beautiful Highway 12. There's a loop there that can take you a whole day. You can do Antimony. You go up north out of here over to Highway 62, and then up from Bryce through the Antimony Narrows and come back on Highway 62. That's a beautiful ride. You can do the loop up past Panguitch Lake onto Cedar Mountain and down uh, Highway 14. That's a beautiful loop. You can do the Zions Canyon loop as part of your trip and make an entire route. You always end up right back here in Panguitch where there's a lot of fun stuff to do. Yeah, it is. It's so cool. It's like a big wagon wheel, you know? You got, this, you got the state parks, the national parks, those beautiful scenic loops right around in here. Mm -hmm. And Panguitch is basically the hub. There we go. Let's take a look at that hub right now. In all, all my life, I've had a near, I call it a near mystical attachment to this town. It was first settled in 1864. They first called the place Fairview. Then they found out there was already a Fairview up in San Pete County, so they had changed the name. So they took the name of the natural lake up here, which the Paiutes had named Panguitch, meaning big fish. As far as the terrain, the beauty, you've got Red Canyon, which is nothing but red rocks, and then you can go up to Panguitch Lake where you're in the Ponderosa Pines. Butch Cassidy came with his mother. They lived in Circleville, working for some rancher on the far north end of the Panguitch Valley. Leroy, he kind of made friends with this Cassidy fellow, and so later, why, he took Cassidy's name and nicknamed Butch, Butch Cassidy, and rode off into <laughs> his life. And, and boy, there, there's more places around that want to attach the name Butch Cassidy to him. I love the Old West feel, um, the welcoming of the people. From an outsider moving into this community, I have never felt more welcomed, more loved. I just feel blessed to call it home. It is just wonderful. This was so good, but I'm almost done with it. I haven't paid for it yet. <laughs> Walls are all original. It's, it's uh, from 1909. It's on the historical register, so it's been rebuilt so that it would uh, maintain that uh, historical register status. So the steam would actually come out the top? Yeah, well, and the fumes from the from the welding rods. Last time it burned down, they, they were playing Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ah! Kept the marquee. Oh, How man. many times has it burned down? Three. Not only is there great history here in Penguich, but you can also buy this history. Check out, look at these chaps. This is authentic. It looks to me like it came from a, <laughs> I think it may have came from a yak, but somebody laughed at me when I said that, but that looks like yak hair to me. You can't just go anywhere How and many? belts like this. Okay, there you Beautiful go. Beautiful yeah. belts. Well, Cowboy Collectibles has been in business for uh, 14 years now. We have uh, merchandise here that's authentic. We pride ourselves, we're a Western antique store, and we pride ourselves in having authentic Western memorabilia. We have uh, coats that date back to the late 1800s up to the present time. You have a brand new white know, Stetson that, straw hat at home, I and know, it fits and you I perfectly. I can wear both of them. There's a great story about how the town was starving, and there are seven um, men from Panguitch that needed to go over to Parowan and save 
the city. They knelt on quilts to pray to find out what to do, and they noticed that the quilts held their weight. So they actually used the quilts to walk over the mountains to Parowan to save Penguage. So we have a festival the second week in June that tells about that story. We settled finally on a monument that had one man that would represent all seven men. And then we have benches within the park with each one of the men's names on and a little bit about their history to honor those men who walked the quilt walk. Alexander Matheson in his journal said that a trip over was hard, but the trip back was harder with the weight of the flower, flower on their back. Oh, yeah, that makes oh sense. my, my, of course. So, wow, it's a Good. beautiful story. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a lot of history in this area. There's even more of it straight ahead on our travel adventure. We're gonna head out to the lake. Stephen's up there exploring Panguitch Lake. Well, thanks, Chad. Now, you guys are focusing on the history of Panguitch, and I decided to focus a little bit more on the adventure, but I couldn't get very far from the history either. I'm here overlooking Panguitch Lake, and when I discovered the rich history of this area, I was shocked, and I want to share it with you today. Just south of Panguitch on Highway 143, a natural body of blue ripples in the morning sun, inviting anglers and sightseers to slow down and find solace in these pine-speckled hills. This is Panguitch Lake, a recreation starting point that offers quiet days on the water or rugged trips on the trail, all the while holding secret a history that makes it stand out among Western hotspots. It's about a half a mile to three quarters of a mile wide and about maybe one, depending on the year because the water goes down, but one and a half to two miles sometimes and it's beautiful. That beauty is evident today as fishermen flock to the shores and set out on the water in search of rainbow and tiger trout. ATV trails lead into the forest almost directly from the water, taking riders on old historic routes and pioneer trails that lead into the mountains and in some cases almost all the way back to Panguitch. Many of the routes are barely 50 inches and take riders back in time to areas few people have ever visited even today. I think it's that trip back in time that I was so surprised by this morning. Penguish Lake actually has some surprising history and I met the right people to share it with me since they lived it. My grandfather purchased uh, the property on the south side of the, the lake in 1912. My father bought the, the ranch on the west side of Pinewich Lake. When I was young, it meant quite a lot of work for me up there, but, but I, I really enjoyed it. Shirley and Grant shared many stories with me that have been all but lost to time. The lake was originally fished by the Paiute tribe, and as Western settlers came in, a unique culture began to flourish. The old resort was built, and people from all walks of life started flocking to Penguich in the late 1800s. At one point, there was even a floating dance hall out on the water, though, as you might imagine, that didn't end well. Materials got waterlogged. <laughs> they got too many people on it and sank. <laughs> they used to have great big 24th of July celebrations up there, and people would come and camp in trailers and in their wagons, and, and they had horse races. Of course, there were many booths at that time, <laughs> which they finally closed down, I guess. They had a straight track up there, and then they later built a circular track, which was about a half a mile long, and that's still visible. And this is actually the remnants of that racetrack. You can see the curve here. Imagine it. You'd have grandstands right here with a couple thousand people watching the horse races they come by. And then right here in the middle, you would have the betting booths where you could drop your money off and bet on your horse right here on Penguin Lake. Today, the resort offers all the modern conveniences you could want with cabins and full RV hookups. But they still hold on to some of that old world charm, taking advantage of their history and the beauty of the area. Between some of the modern cabins, you can still find the originals that stood before the turn of the 20th century when rebels and Indians bet on horses and pulled trout from the cold blue water. This entire area is a gem. You can walk the streets of Penguin and be introduced to a lot of the history that you just don't know is here. And the residents embrace it to their connection with Butch Cassidy, the outlaw, to the pioneer history and the quilt walk where the pioneers went over the mountain using quilts to keep themselves on top of the snow. 
The Penguich area is a unique place to get in touch with the past. It's very tactile. It's right there in front of you. You can actually buy historic clothing at Cowboy Collectibles, like old coats. I mean, they have pairs of boots there that are 100 years old, and you can buy them. So this is a really incredible area where you have adventure right next to a connection to our ancestors that is palpable. We often don't stop to learn about the history of some of the areas we recreate in. But when we do, we gain a much greater appreciation for those lands. And that's what my experience has been today with Penguich Lake. Learning about some of the fun things that have happened here over the last hundred years has given me a much greater love and appreciation for this area. Now remember, the lake is cold year round. It's not really a swimming lake, but that's what makes the fishing so excellent. Come out here, enjoy the beauty, enjoy the fishing. You'll have a wonderful weekend or even a week to explore this area by ATV and on the water. Well, I'm Stephen Human for At Your Leisure. We need to take a commercial break, but when we come back, Darren Kinder is going to have this week's product review. I've got an idea. Go. Seek. Discover what lies beyond. On the entirely new 2018 Gold Wing Tour from Honda. here is five to nine. We earn our scars. We wear our work ethic. We work until the work's done. And when it is, there's a family to raise, a neighbor to check on, a country to feed. A few hours of shut-eye to rest up for tomorrow, the day will finally get something done. Hi, I'm Chad Booth, host of the TV show At Your Leisure. Those of you who watch our show know that we cover recreation in the West, and often we talk about land access issues. But did you know that land access is an important issue in the East too? BRC stands ready to help you protect that vital access to the sport that you love. So remember, no matter where you live in the USA, join, participate, and donate to the Blue Ribbon Coalition. We are in the wild outdoors and we're doing one of my favorite things. We're making pizza today, but we're doing it outside. We have Matt here from Camp Chef and I really do. Pizza is my very favorite thing. Mine too. But I usually make it like in the oven or, you know, I just kind of do the makeshift, right. it, sometimes even in the microwave. Uh -huh. This is an outdoor contraption that we can throw it in and make really awesome pizza. Yeah, exactly. This is one of our newer products as well, um, the Italia Artisan Pizza Oven. Fantastic. We designed it with uh, one of our artisan pizza makers in Logan there, Jack's Pizza. Is there a trick to it or do we just kind of do yeah. our thing? Like, I mean, we our... don't have to be experts? No, it's a learning process. It's having fun with it. It's making what you want, how you like it and throwing it in. You know, this will stay hot enough the whole time while it's cooking, but it'll take, it'll do it. Let's get our hands dirty. All right, Matt, are you an expert at this? I'm um, ready. Trying to be. Okay. Because okay, so... you said you've been cooking lately. Yeah, I've been You're more and more. cooking pizza and learning. We're just gonna stretch these out to about 10 to 12 inch rounds. Okay. We're gonna have a little competition here. Okay, I so, like it. Good, right. healthy competition. So what are you gonna make? I wanna do the margarita. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I mean, you don't have crushed tomatoes or anything, but I mean, I'll do it with the sauce. You can, you can do <laughs> okay. it with that. You can have it <laughs> what are you gonna make? I'm gonna just do a uh, classic cheese bread. Somewhere. And so I just, just spread it around. I mean, this is just make your own, whatever you yep, wanna do, right? Whatever you like it. Okay. This is fun. I've got Parmesan, mozzarella, and smoked cheddar for my cheese bread. Okay. Oh, look at how good this looks. The kids like to make their own pizza, so you can kind of get it ready. They do. And if you're out camping, you can get the kids excited. So yep. I'm just going to put a little bit of the fresh mozzarella in here, too. Great. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, slide these right into the oven and bake them. They'll bake in about seven minutes. It's about 500 degrees in okay. that oven right now. And that's what you want it at, about yeah, 500? Yeah, five, 550. 
and uh, it cooks real quick. I'm like this, yes, yes! I'm excited! I'm gonna cut it up, I'm gonna beat Matt. He thinks he knows what he's doing with pizza. I'm fearing for my life at this point. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did you see that? Did you see my pizza and hers? Oh, Mine was I'm really in trouble. Pretty. Mine was pretty. It was, it was beautiful. Okay, so this is really an amazing oven. How do you get this? Log on to www.campchef.com um, for more information about the Italian artisan pizza oven. Okay, I'm super excited. They yeah. look beautiful, and that you was only a few it? minutes. It smells good yeah, too. Yeah, it smells really good. Yeah, it, it goes quick. And you know, if you're not into artisan pizza making your own homemade, you can even do uh, frozen pizzas. I think we should go cut these open and dig in. Yeah, let's do Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mmm. That's pretty good. <laughs> Don't you think? That's really good. All right, let me taste it. I think you sure. destroyed me. I'm not even. I'm not it's not even going to be a competition. Really, really good, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just go ahead and swallow it. You know what? Thanks. Sometimes people don't like the sauce. And this is your other option, right? <laughs> That's true. Okay, yeah. well I had fun doing this with you. you. Awesome. Camp Thank Chef. Thank you, I did too. .com. You're wonderful. Thank More you. at your leisure ahead. We're going to go ahead and I pack clothes, my dog, my bike, and my mom and dad. Um... Orange juice. Uh, I don't know. And also my blanket is really fuzzy. Mm -hmm. A camera for, for taking pictures. Probably a gun because there might be a bear. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at where the sagebrush grows wild and high and the stars come out at night Oh, there ain't nothing like Being raised in the basin with the youth reservation Skin starvation That Duchesne County life Meet the new leader in off-road utility The completely reinvented Ranger XP 1000 it's got the most power, the largest towing capacity, the highest ground clearance, and the best comfort and storage. Introducing the all-new Polaris Ranger XP 1000, the hardest working, smoothest riding Ranger ever built. Okay, Rhea, you wanted a summer cabin. Yeah. Now you've got one. There it is. Whole thing, right there. So I can stick my little pea shooter out and like. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are continuing to explore the area around Panguitch. Now, we've already talked about the fact that you can take off on a hundred different directions in a road bike and you can spend time in all of the parks and everything, but there are other things to see here as well. This is so cool. We're just right at the mouth here of Casto Canyon. And we're maybe 200 yards from the trailhead. And then you come across this really cool little hideout, which I think it could have been Butch Cassidy's hideout. People say it could have been. Looks like it's put together for protection more than for living comfort. So yeah. it probably didn't qualify as your home, summer home. <laughs> no. But. There are a lot of other things to do, though. This place is packed with activities, not just on road, but off. Let's check them out. Panguitch is a really great, fun place to live. There are so many fun things that go on in the summertime. We have an ATV rally in August that the numbers just keep doubling every year. This Casto Canyon is pretty much our signature ride. It's the most popular ride, the one everybody wants to go on. Really great, fun country to be in, lots of history. We have a lot of people come and ride bicycles. We have uh, mountain biking, the same trails pretty much as the ATV. 
We have the Quilt Walk, which is the second weekend in June, kind of a tribute to how Penguich was settled. Then comes the Balloon Festival. If you've ever been to a hot air balloon festival, you need to come to Penguich. You can go just about any direction. In fact, on the penguich.com website, we have a lot of day trips that take you all over the county, but always bring you back to Penguich. Once you stop and you, you discover all of our hidden secrets, you'll find out what a great place it is to be and to stay. There's so many events, there's so many fun things to do when you're done with your hiking or your ATV riding, all kinds of activities to do. So have we convinced you that you should spend more than just one day in Panguitch, maybe two, three, four, five, six? because there's so much to do. Oh my gosh, everything, anything you can think of under the sun, because we're under it right now, everywhere around here is beautiful. Exactly. Well, right now it's time for us to go to our Trailhead Adventure, brought to you each week by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. There are few places in the world known to be more wild, open, and free than Montana. It's part of the fabric of life here, one that residents strongly support. Like many western states, public land issues have come to the forefront of Montana politics. And here in Bozeman, different recreation groups, ranging from ATV clubs to cycling organizations, have come together under the banner of Citizens for Balanced Use. Their goal? Protect their ability to explore big sky country. Right now the big issue, and it really has been for about the past uh, 10 to 15 years, is access onto public lands, especially federally managed public lands under the BLM and the U.S. Forest Service. Each time a travel plan comes out, it is more and more restrictive, and we lose more and more of our access. The National Forest, we still have some problems trying to get into areas. They're trying to close more and more roads down for us, and we're just trying to keep those areas open because that's what we like to do. We like to go recreate in these areas. Before the travel plan closure, we only snowmobiled on 7% of the Gallatin National Forest, which is about 125,000 acres, and we're down to about 69,000 acres of rideable terrain in which we are able to access and ride. We're always looking to, to try and maintain the access we have, and in the future, we'd like to get some of the places back that we lost in the last travel plan. Such statistics sound familiar to recreationists in states like Utah, Nevada, and Idaho, where resource management plans have restricted more and more land with each revision. Montana residents created Citizens for Balanced Use as a way to band together and make sure their voices were being heard throughout the political process. Tonight, those user groups have met for their annual fundraiser and to discuss issues that affect each form of recreation. Some of their public land problems have begun to affect even the non-motorized users in attendance. Maybe you're not a dirt biker or a mountain biker or an ATVer, but you like to hike. What ends up happening is if you want to get deeper into the woods, in a lot of cases now, you don't have the ability to drive further on a forest service road and begin your hike deeper in the woods. In some cases, you're literally parking at the highway and hiking from there. And unless you're in fantastic shape and have several days, you may not be able to get to the places that you used to be able to get to as a hiker. Currently, organizations like Citizens for Balanced Use are teaming up with similar groups in other states to begin working with federal officials to create functional public land planning that could curtail the restrictions hitting places like Montana and Utah. By working together, they may change the focus of the public land debate. With the CBU, uh, you know, they're good for trying to keep the lands and stuff open for us, so we're able to go in and do our prospecting on our claims. There's power in numbers. Uh, CBU has a lot of members there. They've got some lawyers that can do research for you. It's part of your heritage that you will lose. You know, fortunately I have horses. I've been able to access many wilderness areas, but there's a lot of people that don't have that advantage or you're not physically able to. As taxpayers, we fund those lands and we would like to recreate on those. Montana has always been a place for freedom and adventure with diverse recreation groups joining their voices and working together, it may just stay that way. From the Trailhead, I'm Terry Wood. Too often we find ourselves in shoes like these, or these. Wouldn't it be nice to change into something more like this, or this? How about these? Put on whatever shoes you prefer. 
and come to Beaver County. We have exactly the adventure you need to put under them. So the next time you want to change out of these, come to Beaver County where you can jump into a pair of these. Beaver County, Utah. Lace up for adventure. And we will see you next week on The County Seat. Every day we just go, go, baby, go. Sea Dew introduces the newest ways to explore the water. Load up all your gear, catch some rays, grab a bite to eat, crank up some tunes, and tons more. Every day we just go, go, baby, go. See do escape the everyday. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. Well, we're just wrapping our day up here in Penguin, Utah, and we've had so much fun and lots of surprises. We have, <laughs> and of course, we're choosing to wrap up our trip at a place we stay a lot, the Purple Sage, right here on Main Street, with their marquee motel light. It's a historical landmark. It is, and the rooms and are so adorable. If you ask nice, they might turn the light on for you. But <laughs> there are lots of options. We've got three campgrounds in town, and you have, there are a dozen motels, actually 11. One of them's historical, it's closed. But you've got lots of options when you come here to town. You can stay for 11 days and stay in a different one every day. Right now, we want to get on a calendar of events. First off, for the second week in June, which is here in Panguitch, which is the quilt walk event, which we talked about earlier in the show, and you really want to get your families out here for that. What a great walk through history. Play, dinner, you can learn how to make quilts, the whole nine yards. Yeah. <laughs> End of the month, same place, Panguitch, Utah, the big balloon festival, and you better get your rooms right now, because yeah. that's a big event. Right. I mean, hopefully we'll get a room. Yes. <laughs> we better make our reservations right now. <laughs> and you'll want to take a look at this big event next week's show. What does it take to turn a mild-mannered AYL travel reporter into a scuba certified diver? Next week, we're finding out as we delve deep to learn what it takes to breathe underwater. Then come with me, Stephen Human, as I hit one of the most difficult ropes courses in the West. Finally, Reese Stein hits Havasu and discovers summer has arrived a bit early. Well, looks like it's going to be a great show next week. Great breakfast this morning to oh. wrap up our trip. Yes, we're at the Cowboy Smokehouse here in Penguin. And, oh, yummy, yummy breakfast. Did you know this place used to be a jail? Yes, that's right. I, I believe Butch Cassidy spent some time here. <laughs> he did. He lived everywhere in town here at some point or another. <laughs> right. Now, there are a lot of dining opportunities, and if you frequent Penguin, you want to pay attention to another place. Last night, we had dinner at the Big Fish down at the old, it's where the old bar used to be at the end of town best wings I've ever had. And I've been to Buffalo, New York, to the original restaurant where they all started. These guys have got it dialed in. So yeah. check it out when you come down to uh, Panguitch. And uh, remember, there's adventure around every band. All you gotta do is get out there and create your own adventure. That's true, see you next time. Come on in. I think I'm gonna have to back in because I'm afraid I'm gonna get stuck if I go in front head first. We don't often take a look at the history of Batine. I'm always better at my second one anyway.